Hello cloud experts. So let's move forward with a quick demo on EC2. So to do this, either we can look at these recently visited services and click EC2 here, or simply type EC2 in the sign box and click on EC2 here, or go to the services and in services under compute, I can click on EC2. So they will all lead to the same page, which will be the EC2 page. And in this case, as of now, I am in the Northern Virginia region, but I can change the region whatever I want. I can make it Asia Pacific Mumbai region or US East 1, US East 2, or any other region of my requirement. When I look at this, it gives me a lot of information. Running instances, elastic IP, dedicated host, snapshot, give me a lot, lot of option in the left side of it. As of now, we'll not get into these details, but we'll just see how to launch a new instance. So I will click on running instance. So as of now, there are no instances which are created in Northern Virginia regions. So I may have some other instances running in other regions. So to start with, I will simply click on launch instance. The very first page, when I see, it asks me what is the Amazon machine image I have to choose. Amazon machine image is like an operating system for your machine which you want to create. You can go with the options available here and if you really want to use only the free tier available version so you can simply choose free tier version here so it will show you all the options which are available only in free tier however if you really want to create some machine of your choice you can always uncheck this and you will get all the options which are available you can have your own custom made AMIs created which you can use for future machines you can get it from AWS marketplace which are a lot of uh, AMI is available which are on the chargeable basis and you can also get, go ahead and get some AMIs in community AMIs as well. So as of now we will not get into this, we will simply quick start and we will go with the free tier option but as of now I will just uh, I will just go ahead and we will choose only the options which are available in free tier version. So here also it gives me lot of options which are available so I will simply go ahead and select it. When I select the AMI, it asks me to choose the machines which are available. It has, it comes with lot of families of instances. So for example, we have lot of families related to general purpose. We have other than general purpose, we have lot of other families avail available as well. Compute optimized, GPU instances, F FPGA, as of now we will not get into these details. We will simply go ahead because only T2 micro is something which is free tier eligible. So micro instances are eligible for the AWS free tier user. So as of now, we will only go with the free tier. So we'll go ahead and launch a T2, T2 micro machine. We'll go on next. Now in this case, how many instances I want to launch? So as of now, I will go with only one instance. I can also launch instances in auto scaling group, which we'll discuss in some future sessions. I can also go for spot instances as we discussed, so as of now we will not go for spot instances. Now there are two options here, either I can create, I can go ahead and use the default VPC which is created or I can create my own, my new VPC. At the same time, I can also choose my subnet, so as of now I am going only with the default VPC. We will see in the next, uh, next few sessions how to create your own custom VPC. So we will see. Uh, either you want to assign public IP to this particular machine or not. So we will check all these details at a later stage. So you can also the IAM role what we created earlier. You can also create those IAM, you can assign those IAM roles to EC, EC2 machine as well. Shutdown behavior. So you want to stop or terminate whenever these uh, EC2s are being stopped. And there are a number of other options. We will go ahead and uh, like uh, we will not talk about all these things as of now. So if you have any bootstrap script for this particular machine, you can also type that as a user data. You can do it as text which you can copy and paste here or you can also create this as a file. Now next add storage, we will move add storage. So by default 8 GB of EBS volume is already attached to it. If you really want to add attach more volumes, we can click here and add more volumes here and also change the size of this particular volume. So EBS volumes are typically like hard disk of EC2 machine. So with every computer the way we have hard disk. Similarly with EC2 machine we have EBS volumes which is typically like a hard disk of EC2 computer. Now next add tags. So we can also add a tag where key is department and 
the department is development so we can choose what is the key and what is the value for that particular department next configure security groups so as of now we can have multiple security groups so as uh, we can either create a new security group or we can select an existing security group so we have multiple security groups here so in this case i will create a new ser new security group which will say ec2 for ctg description of this i will go ahead and just use the same description so we have used a new security group named ec2 ctg and we are creating some inbound and outbound rules that means this machine should be available to access by via ssh from tcp port number 22 and from any ip address so we what we have done is we have given permissions to access this machine via ssh we will be able to ssh this machine from anywhere in the world by using port number 22 so let's move forward review and launch it now we will just have a, we will review all these things so what machine we have chosen what are the different instance type the security group instance details and other stuff and finally we'll go ahead and launch this particular machine now it allows me to choose an existing key pair or we can have a new key pair available so in this case i'm just going to create a new key pair and i'm keeping this new key pair name as ec2 dot dash ctg so ec2 dash ctg is the key pair name i'm keeping and i will simply click here and download this key pair so we have to very sure when we download this key pair we keep it safe otherwise if we lost lost this key pair we will not be able to log in into this particular ec2 instance so i'm just downloading it to my computer so this is down, downloaded to my computer and i will go ahead and launch instance So now I will simply go ahead and go to the EC2 page machine, EC2 page, click on instances and my instance is now in the pending state. It will have some status checks with two by two checks completed. So it will take a couple of minutes. We will pause this video and thus just come back once this machine is ready. So now our EC2 is up and running. We can see the instance state is running and status check as 2 by 2 completed now we can also click here and change this name to whatever we want we can have up to 255 characters and it will go ahead and put this name as ctg ctg here is cloud training guru so let's see how we can connect to this state uh, this uh, instance there are multiple ways to do it either i can simply connect here and click on action connect and it gives me multiple options so either i can connect it by using ec2 instance connect so we can have direct connection from EC2 itself and to do this we will not need the key which is generated during the creation of EC2 user. So we will simply see our EC username is EC2 use EC2 dash user and we will simply connect here and it opens another window where now we are connected to this particular EC2 instance. So we are inside the EC2 instance which is which we have created. And now we can do whatever we want with this particular EC2 machine. However, let us look at the other option. So as of now, I'm created on an Apple Mac. If you are on a Windows machine, you need to download Putty and Putty Gen kind of applications to create the required keys and log in into EC2 machine by using SSH. However, I'm using a Mac. So what I will do is I will simply open a machine terminal. So I opened a terminal. In terminal, I am on the my main drive from where i will go to the desktop desktop is the place where i have stored my key and this key is stored in a folder called as ctg dash key so i have stored this file this pm file in ctg dash key so i will simply go ahead and ls not as ls cd ctg dot key if i do ls i see this file which is created here which is pm file which is ec2 dash ctg so we have this file created stored in it is created during the ec2 instance and now it is stored in on my folder which is ctg dash key now before we move forward and connect to this let's go ahead and just change the permissions for this file so that it should not be publicly visible so i'll say ch mode 400 ec2 so i'm just changing the permissions of this file so the permission of the files are now changed and now i will simply go ahead write type ssh minus i and the name of the key and then I will write ec2 dash user 
and I will need the address of this particular EC2 machine. To see this, I will go ahead, I will go to the menu of the EC2 machine and I can see this. There are two options available here. Either I can go with public IP of this machine or I can go with the public DNS value of this machine. So as of now, I am just choosing the public DNS value. I simply copied it from here, go to terminal again and just simply pasted it here. So what I did here is I need the EC2 user to log in on a public address. That public address is given in your EC2 instance. Instead of public address, I can also use the public IP address. So I will simply go ahead and write enter. And as soon as I write, uh, click on enter, I am now logged in into the EC2 machine which is available on a private IP. So if you see this, the public IP was available for my disability, but inside AWS infrastructure, it is hosted on a private IP address. We will discuss all these things at a detail stage, a later stage in detail when we talk about VPC and security groups and stuff like that. So this is how we can launch our EC2 machine and log in into EC2 machine by using SSH on a terminal application on Mac. There are various ways, other ways to do it. Either you can have through, through Windows, RDP connections, remote desktop connection, or you can do it through PuTTY application, which can be installed either on Mac or on Windows. That's all in this session. Look forward to see you in the next session.